This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 161, Nickelodeon and the Fat Loss Secrets They Withheld by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web. So let's start this week off on the right foot with an inspirational quote from the great Thomas Edison. Quote, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Now today's post comes from Roger Lawson, but really quickly, we're now just two days away from another book giveaway. If you wanna be a part of our raffles for free, make sure you're on our mailing list at oldpodcast.com. As always, I'll give you a little reminder at the end of the show, but for now, let's get to the post and start optimizing your life. Nickelodeon and the Fat Loss Secrets They Withheld by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. As an 80s baby, I grew up during what was inarguably the most revolutionary time in modern day history. I mean, come on, we had the 56K internet, Power Rangers, Pogs, and the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. How can you argue with that? Answer, you can't, although I encourage you to try your hardest. The best part of this existence is that we had shows that not only entertained, but also enrolled us in the school of hard knocks. Want to learn about the perils of drug use? Check out just how wild Carlton gets when hopped up on speed. What about the sheer thrill of bungee jumping? Look no further than Trevor's ill-fated proposal to Hillary. However, intertwined within these sage-like teachings, one of the most important lessons of all in the quest for sexification was lost in all of the hubbub, that of how to maximize your fat loss. As the grand historian of all things 90s TV, let me weave a tale for you. Once upon a time not long ago, there was a television show on Nickelodeon that was of great importance to kids who raced home after school, leaving a trail of discarded juice boxes in their wake to watch it. That show was called Legends of the Hidden Temple. The premise of the show was this. Six groups of kids battle it out via physical challenges in order to earn the right to enter the temple and escape with the sacred treasure. In order to progress within the temple, the young adventurers had to solve various puzzles, one of which was responsible for failing more unsuspecting newbies than banana peels and whoopee cushions combined, the Shrine of the Silver Monkey. In order to proceed to the next room, the monkey had to be assembled in the correct order on the pedestal. It consisted of three pieces, the base, the body, and the head. However, due to the lack of functioning retinas or the failure of the American schooling system, More often than not, the head or the body ended up going on first. Time ran out, and then the kids went home with nothing but memories of epic failure for their troubles. Okay, so far I've managed to prove two things. A, the 90s were awesome. B, some kids need to revisit kindergarten. But how the heck does this relate to fat loss? Let's get to it. Agony of defeat. One of the most fundamental errors that most people make when looking to drop a few pounds is that they start with a base that isn't conducive to their goals. For instance, I'm sure we all know at least one person who begins a fat loss program with all the energy and vigor of a five-year-old on a cookie crisp high. They hit the gym in the morning, they hit the gym during their lunch break, they hit the gym after work, they hit the gym right before bedtime. They probably hit the gym in their dreams, bench pressing with good old Freddy Krueger himself giving them a spot. Naturally, after weeks of arduous effort, they hop on the scale with a smile on their face. I mean, surely after all this hard work, they're destined to be rewarded, right? Wrong. Knees meet the floor in horror as the scale greets them with the terrible news. Same, different day. Without knowing it, they violated the cardinal rule of fat loss. Develop a solid nutrition base or prepare thyself for a lifetime of sailing the blubbery seas. Just like the failed assembly of the silver monkey, many people have it all wrong when it comes time to implement their fat loss plan. And as a result, often spend months, if not years, spinning their wheels in frustration. Can you out-train a subpar diet? Sure, but I can think of a few things that are slightly harder, such as slurping dry the Atlantic Ocean with a straw, or body slamming the Empire State Building. Simply put, it's hard as all get out to burn a ton of calories through exercise alone, unless you've built up your physical capacity to the point where you're able to handle the workload, and even then, it's always easier to eat less food than it is to burn it off after doing so. So what is the person looking to bring that image of themselves into reality left to do? Have no fear. 
As the conductor of the Sexification Express, I take it upon myself to make sure that you are equipped with the requisite knowledge to get the ball rolling on your own fat loss journey. So, let's go through the necessary steps of creating a solid foundation. The base. In order to stand a chance of getting to where you wanna be, you first have to figure out where you are. Therefore, it is of super duper importance that you determine your maintenance calories. There are a lot of fancy calculators out there, but you don't need no stinking technology to figure out where you stand. Just multiply your current body weight in pounds by 14 if you lean more towards the inactive side of things, or 15 to 16 if you have a higher level of daily movement, such as resistance training and moderate intensity cardio. Remember that this is but a rough estimate and nothing more. That said, it still serves as an effective starting point compared to just pulling random numbers out of thin air. If you find that you're gaining weight at this calorie level, decrease your starting number by 150 calories and reassess. I know that there are some folks out there who would rather skip this step for whatever reason, and that's fine with me as long as you are progressing towards your goals. If you're raring to get going, simply multiply your starting body weight in pounds by 10 to 12. For those that have jobs that don't involve much movement at all throughout the day, you may want to start out with the lower number, possibly going as low as 8 calories times your body weight in pounds if you're really, really inactive. As a side note, I rarely recommend going down to such a level, especially for more than a week or two. So start with your higher values and stick with those until you have reason to do otherwise. And no, not achieving your goals within the first few weeks is not a valid reason. Cliff's Notes version. For maintenance intake, multiply 14 to 16 times your body weight in pounds. The less active you are, the lower the number you start with. For fat loss intake, multiply 10 to 12 times your body weight in pounds. The less active you are, the lower the number you start with. For muscle gain intake, multiply 18 to 20 times your body weight in pounds. Again, the less active you are, the lower number you start with. There you have it, a simple, time-effective way to estimate your maintenance, fat loss, and muscle gaining calories. If you don't have this down, you've got no business proceeding to the next level. So consider this your homework assignment. You just listened to the post titled Nickelodeon and the Fat Loss Secrets They Withheld by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. Growing up, I too was a product of the 80s and 90s, and I do not remember this Silver Monkey show at all. Although I did get Nickelodeon at some point, but my parents were kind of, uh, let's just say, frugal with their money, so they didn't want to really pay for cable. So I didn't get Nickelodeon until I was uh, approaching late elementary school. So maybe this show was canceled by then, who knows. But I am totally not familiar with this show at all. When I would watch Nickelodeon, I would watch things like reruns of Inspector Gadget and Looney Tunes, and I don't even remember, oh, Hey Dude, I think was another one I would watch, Uh, Double Dare, I think that was a show. So I don't know how I missed this, but I love that Raj pulled in this game show as a nice metaphor for achieving your weight goals. And he's absolutely right. The best place to start is with a baseline. And one of the things I always recommend people do is actually start recording what they're eating. That's one way to really determine your baseline. How do you know where you're supposed to start on your journey? This is how you do it. You have to record what you do now. It's just like with weightlifting. It's just like with cardio. How much weight am I gonna lift today? Well, what's my starting point? And then how much more do I need to lift above and beyond my starting point? So you can do this with dieting as well, which is what I always recommend to folks. Yes, it's tedious, I get it, writing down whatever you eat and drink throughout the day, but it gives you such a nice picture of where you are and where your mindset is that you really can't go wrong with that. All right, before we go, just a quick reminder that we give away books to random people on our mailing list on the first of every month, and we're now just two days away. So if you wanna have a chance to win, plus get some free helpful spreadsheet tools from us, come by oldpodcast.com and enter your email address. You'll get our spreadsheet tools right away and you'll be in all of our raffles automatically. That's it for today's show. I hope you have a great start to your week and I'll see you on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show 
and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.